Good evening. I will be presenting to you the case of Republic versus Amnigan Bayan in line with our topic, Changes in Government and Statehood. The facts of the case are as follows. Immediately upon her assumption to office following the successful ENSA revolution, then President Corazon C. Aquino issued Executive Order No. 1 creating the PCGG. The PCGG was tasked to recover all ill-gotten wealth of former President Marcos, his immediate family, relatives, subordinates, and close associates. Relatedly, on March 3, 1986, the constabulary raiding team served at Dimaano's residence a search warrant captioned illegal possession of firearms and ammunition. Dimaano was one of the respondents in this case. The Sandigan Bayan ruled that the confiscated properties from Dimaano's house were illegally seized and therefore inadmissible in evidence. Petitioner of the Republic claims that the Sandigan Bayan erred with its decision. Petitioner wants the court to take judicial notice that the raiding team conducted the search and seizure on March 3, 1986 or five days after the successful ENSA revolution. Petitioner argues that a revolutionary government was operative at the time of virtue of Proclamation No. 1 announcing that President Aquino and Vice President Laurel were taking power in the name and by the will of the Filipino people. Petitioner asserts that the revolutionary government effectively withheld the operation of the 1973 Constitution, which guaranteed private respondents ex exclusionary right, which is a guaranteed right under the Bill of Rights of the 1973 Constitution. So the issues in this case are as follows. Number one, whether the revolutionary government was bound by the Bill of Rights of the 1973 Constitution during the interregnum. Number two, whether the protection accorded to individuals under the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights remained in effect during the interregnum. So the court held that the Bill of Rights under the 1973 Constitution was not operative during the interregnum. However, the court also held that the protection accorded to individuals under the Covenant and the Declaration remained in effect during the interregnum. So the court discussed the interregnum. So during the interregnum, the directives and orders of the revolutionary government were the supreme law because no constitution limited the extent and scope of such directives and orders. With the abrogation of the 1973 constitution by the successful revolution, there was no municipal law higher than the directives and orders of the revolutionary government. Thus, during the interregnum, a person could not invoke any exclusionary right under the Bill of Rights because there was neither a constitution nor a Bill of Rights during the interregnum. With regard to the covenant in the declaration, nevertheless, according to the court, even during the interregnum, the Filipino people continued to enjoy under the covenant and the declaration almost the same rights found in the Bill of Rights of the 1973 Constitution. The revolutionary government, after installing itself as the Bayuri government, assumed responsibility for the state's good faith compliance with the covenant to which the Philippines is a signatory. Article 2, Paragraph 1 of the Covenant requires each signatory state to respect and to ensure to all individuals within its territory and subject to its jurisdiction the rights recognized in the present covenant. Under Article 17, Paragraph 1 of the Covenant, the revolutionary government had the duty to ensure that no one shall be subjected to arbitrary or unlawful interference with his privacy, family, home, or correspondence. The declaration to which the Philippines is also a signatory provides in its Article 17, Paragraph 2, that no, no one shall be arbitrarily deprived of his property, although the signatories to the declaration did not intend it as a legally binding document, being only a declaration. The court has interpreted the declaration as part of the generally accepted principles of international law and binding on the state. Thus, the revolutionary government was also obligated under international law to observe the rights in of individuals under the declaration. The revolutionary government did not liquidate the covenant or the declaration during the interregnum. As a conclusion, the court considers the declaration as part of customary international law and that Filipinos as human beings are proper subjects of the rules of international law laid down in the covenant. The fact is the revolutionary government did not repudiate the covenant or the declaration in the same way it repudiated the 1973 constitution. As the Yuri government, the revolutionary government could not escape responsibility for the state's good faith compliance with its treaty obligations under international law. Thank you very much.